Okay, but what about some of the other molecules that we need to build our uh, primitive uh, early cell? Um, we need to have uh, lipid-like molecules, amphiphilic molecules, that can self-assemble into membranes and generate compartments spontaneously. So these are molecules that are amphiphilic. They have uh, one part that likes to be in water and another part that doesn't like to be in water. And the way that those uh, preferences are balanced is by forming membranes in which the nonpolar parts are on the inside and the polar parts of the molecules face out into the water. So it turns out that it's actually, uh, again, very easy to make molecules like that in a variety of different scenarios. In fact, uh, Dave Diemer and his colleagues showed that you can extract molecules from the Murchison meteorite. Uh, it's one of these carbonaceous chondrite meteorites that's rich in organic materials. Uh, you can extract molecules that will self-assemble into uh, vesicles, as you can see here. Uh, so they spontaneously make uh, membrane sheets that close up into small vesicles. Uh, here's another example. Um, this is an experiment uh, that was done to uh, mimic processes going on in uh, interstellar molecular clouds where you have uh, various gases that have condensed on the surface of silica particles. And they're subjected to irradiation by ultraviolet light and ionizing radiation. Uh, so if you make ices like that in the laboratory, uh, subject them to ultraviolet uh, radiation, you get a lot of complicated chemistry going on. And then in that vast mix of products, you can extract molecules, which again will form membranes and self-assemble uh, into these vesicle compartments. Here is yet another scenario. This is a hydrothermal uh, synthesis uh, done by uh, Bob Hazen and Dave Diemer. Uh, again, uh, in hydrothermal uh, processing, you, uh, you can grow carbon chains with uh, uh, oxygenated groups such as carboxylates at the end, and these self-assemble into uh, membranes and make many compartments, as you can see in this beautiful image. Okay, so uh, what would be an example of an early Earth environment where something like this could take place? Uh, there are a series of experiments um, uh, from the Simonate lab that suggest that hydrothermal synthesis could happen uh, uh, deep down in, in regions uh, with high temperature and high pressure uh, on the surface of catalytic minerals such as transition metal uh, sulfides or oxides, uh, which, and those reactions would basically turn uh, hydrogen and carbon monoxide into fatty acids and related uh, compounds. Okay, so the uh, next uh, slide here is a movie that was prepared by Janet Iwasa that illustrates this process. So we're going uh, deep into the earth, down uh, through the water channels of, of a geyser, and, and uh, here we're looking at the surface of these catalytic uh, transition metal minerals. And you can see uh, hydrogen and carbon monoxide molecules bouncing around the surface and the mineral is catalyzing their assembly into chains, uh, which eventually will be released and float up. Uh, in, they'll be caught up in the flow of, of water and, and thereby uh, brought to the surface, uh, where you can imagine these fatty acids, fatty alcohols, and related molecules uh, being aerosolized and concentrated in droplets, and perhaps even building up into large deposits uh, on the land surface. Okay, so it doesn't seem like the prebiotic assembly of molecules that could spontaneously form uh, membrane vesicles is all that difficult. It's a, definitely an understudied area of prebiotic chemistry. It needs more work, uh, but it looks, uh, I think, reasonably uh, plausible. So the most prebiotically likely uh, molecules would be uh, things like capric acid that you see down here. Uh, short chain saturated fatty acids. Uh, so we do experiments in the lab with molecules like this, uh, but we also use uh, uh, longer chain unsaturated uh, molecules like myristoleic acid and oleic acid as model systems because they're just generally easier to work with. So, uh, so what happens if you just take one of these fatty acids and shake it up in water with some salt and buffer? Uh, is it hard to make membranes? No. What you can see 
is that uh, you just spontaneously uh, make vesicles in, in a huge uh, variety of complex uh, structures, a huge range of sizes, all the way from uh, 30 microns, this large vesicle, uh, to many, many smaller vesicles ranging down to 30 nanometers. Uh, many of these vesicles are composed of uh, multiple sheets of membrane, uh, so stacks of membranes. You can see some of these vesicles have smaller vesicles inside them. So it's a very heterogeneous, complex uh, mixture. Uh, 